Moto Bros will tell you to stand. It moves your weight from the seat to the pegs, they say. That lowers your center of gravity, they say, making the bike more stable, they say. But however often people say it, it's completely wrong. Your center of gravity is nothing more than the average location of weight. The center of gravity of North America, for example, would be closer to Texas than Toronto. For our physical purposes, a 400-pound bike and 200-pound man can be averaged to a 600-pound point right about there. How that weight is supported doesn't matter. I can sit on the seat, stand on the pegs, hover like a guru. It's irrelevant. The average location of weight is unchanged, so the center of gravity is unchanged. If anything, standing marginally raises the center of gravity, since your torso is slightly higher, which by most accounts should make the handling worse. But it isn't. And to understand why, we must abandon center of gravity for a more boring and more useful concept called moment of inertia. Remember that we're trying to avoid falling over. So like an Australian restaurateur, we want our system to be resistant to tipping. Moment of inertia describes exactly that. It's the amount of effort required to tip something. When mass is located near the roll axis, an object tips easily. When mass is located far from a roll axis, it resists rotation. This is why tightrope walkers carry those long poles. They're trying to move mass as far as possible from their roll axis so they become harder to tip. A motorcycle's roll axis is where the wheels meet the ground, and by moving your body mass further from it, you increase your system's moment of inertia. More resistance to tipping feels more stable. We now see a truer picture, but not yet the full picture. Up to now, we've been treating the motorcycle and the rider as a single object. Which is a fair assumption when you're glued to the seat, since whatever forces act on the motorcycle also act on your ass. But that's why riding coaches say to stand with loose limbs, so your body can act as an independent body. See, the bump is never the problem. It's the momentum that bump imparts that sends you airborne. But momentum is mass times velocity, and that's optional. Not for your bike, and a movable object will send the entire mass of your motorcycle upward at some velocity of impact. But for you, remember you're a second body. You can let the bump bend your knees rather than lift your mass. And if your mass moves no velocity, then you add no momentum. This is why hitting a bump sitting may send you skyward, while hitting a bump standing may not. So the simple answer is that you're better off standing wherever your motorcycle encounters sudden bumps. On pavement, this is limited to railroad tracks and common debris. But off-road, it's everywhere. And that's taxing, because the two-body solution only works when you differentiate your weight on muscles. I'm conditioned to do precisely one squat each morning, so this is exhausting. But if I try to rest on my skeletal structure, and we're back to the rigid one-body problem. The best hack I've found for this is called twin pegs. It's a secondary heel shelf that can be shimmed down for tiptoeing around trails, levered into harder for heeling the back tire into mud or descents. Yet for common use, it feels less like standing on a bar and more like standing on solid ground. So you spring your weight with big thigh muscles rather than weak ankles and calves. The result instantly doubles your stamina for standing up. Which, as we can now explain, is better. <laughs>